timelapse feature is one of my favorite GoPro features and it has become even better on the Hero 10. If you are wondering what settings are available for a timelapse recording and what effects they have, then take a few minutes for this video. If you switch to the timelapse mode, you will see in the default configuration the shortcut for the field of view in the lower left corner, the shortcut for the zoom on the right in the middle and the shortcut for the time ramp in the lower right corner. In the middle, there is the button for the actual settings menu. Here you can see the current settings. At the moment, this would be time warp, a resolution of 4K, the automatic setting for the speed and wide as field of view or the digital lens as GoPro calls it. With a tap on this button, the main menu opens. Here you can choose between time warp, time lapse and night lapse. In time warp mode, the camera takes images at certain intervals, which it then merges into a video. The special thing about the time warp mode is that this mode is intended for situations in which the camera moves, for example when you're riding a bike or when you walk towards a building and want to create a more typical hyperlapse. To make sure the result looks good, the video is optimally stabilized by the camera. This way, you can make spectacular short clips. In time-lapse mode, you should mount the camera on a tripod. There is no stabilization by the camera. This mode is intended, for example, for landscape shots with passing clouds. Time-lapses can be used very well to visualize the course of time. The night-lapse mode is basically very similar to the time-lapse mode. This mode is, however, as the name suggests, intended for shots at night or in low-light conditions. This mode is set up in such a way that the best possible results are achieved in these situations. The automatic mode of the camera will opt for long exposure times, so you need a very stable tripod. If you are by the way interested in which tripods or mounts I use for my time lapses, take a look at the links in the video description. There you will also find links for all my favorite GoPro accessories. We will now first have a look at the time lapse mode, then the night lapse mode, and finally the time warp mode. To open the settings menu for the respective mode, tap on the pen and the right. So let's begin with the time lapse mode. Here you can see the possible settings in this mode. The most important setting concerns the format. We should take a look at this setting first because the other settings partly depend on the respective format. On the format, you can choose between time lapse video and time lapse photo. If you choose time lapse video, the GoPro will automatically create a video. The result of your recording is not a large number of photos, but a video file. The advantage is obvious. No further editing step is necessary for your time-lapse recording. Time-lapse video mode has another advantage compared to the time-lapse photo mode. It uses much less storage space on your memory card. So if you're on a long vacation and you're running out of memory, you should choose the time-lapse video mode. Unlike with the time-lapse video mode, the camera in the time-lapse photo mode takes a number of photos. The result of your recording is not a video file, but a large number of photos. With these photos, you can easily create a time-lapse video with any editing program. But why should you choose this mode if it means more space on your memory card and more work? The individual photos contain much more information than the individual frames of the video file, so you have much more possibilities for editing the image. You can edit the images with any photo editing software and achieve spectacular results in this way. It might also be that you don't want to create a video at all, I just want to take a photo, but are afraid to miss the right moment. With the time-lapse photo mode, you can simply take a number of pictures and then choose the best one. Let's take a look at the individual settings in time-lapse video mode. Under resolution, you choose the resolution of the video file. In the 16 to 9 format, which would be the lower line, 4K and 1080 are available. 4K and 2.7K in the upper line use the 4 to 3 format. A typical video file has a 16 to 9 format, so if you select 4K or 2.7K in the upper line, you will get the 4 to 3 image. This format has an extended field of view at the top and bottom. However, you will find black bars on the left and right. In order to create a 16 to 9 recording, you have to crop your clip in post, but you have more room at the top and bottom. For the best possible results, I usually choose 4K. This also has the advantage that in contrast to 1080, you can change the framing in post without losing much quality. Under lens, you can select the field of view. You have the choice between wide, linear and narrow. Wide is the typical field of view of the GoPro. If you don't like the distortion of the GoPro's fisheye lens, you can choose linear. This removes most of the distortion, but the image is cropped. This also applies to narrow, but here the image is cropped even more. Since I like the wide angle of the GoPro, I usually choose wide. Under interval, you can set in which time interval the GoPro will capture images for your time-lapse video. Generally applies, the more movement in the scene, the shorter the interval should be and the less movement, the longer the interval should be. So a short interval is recommended for example for capturing a street or a crowded place. 
a longer interval for slowly moving clouds. The longer the interval, the longer the recording of your video will take. That means for a video file with 30 frames per second, you need of course for each second in the video 30 images. If you set the interval to 10 seconds, you will need 5 minutes for every second of your time-lapse video. At an interval of 5 seconds, only 2.5 minutes and so on. Of course, the result will then look different. In general, I would recommend the following intervals. 1 second if there is a lot of movement, for example with vehicles. 2 seconds for crowds or very fast moving clouds. 5 to 10 seconds for normal cloud movements or also for example for sunrises or sunsets. More than 10 seconds to capture the movements of shadows or even for the night sky with stars. Try to get a feel for what you like yourself. If you have no idea at the beginning and just want to do a time lapse with clouds, then you can start with 5 or 10 seconds. All the time lapse shots in this video were taken here in the Italian Alps. And in case you're new here, my name is Werner and this channel is about filmmaking tutorials, GoPro and other consumer cameras. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're interested in these topics. With scheduled capture, there is now the possibility to schedule your capture. For example, if you want to take a time lapse of the sunrise without getting up in the morning, you can place your GoPro in a suitable spot and set a time when the camera should start recording. For example, at 6 a.m. Now the camera will start recording at this time and will continue recording until you turn it off manually. If you want the camera to stop recording automatically after a certain time, you can set the duration of the capture under duration. For a sunrise, for example, an hour should be enough. Under timer, you can set the camera to start recording 3 or 10 seconds after the shutter button is pressed. This way, you can avoid that the first image of your time-lapse recording is blurred. This is especially interesting for night-lapse recordings. Under zoom, you can digitally zoom into the image. However, this will reduce the image quality. You can also achieve the same result in post by cropping. For this reason, you should only use this feature if you don't want to edit your video. Before we come to the Protein settings, let's take a quick look at what changes when we set the format to time-lapse photo. In the time-lapse photo mode, we have similar settings as in the time-lapse video mode. There is the possibility to set the lens, the interval, schedule capture, duration, the timer and the zoom. Under output, you can additionally activate the RAW mode. In this case, RAW files in the GPR format are saved in addition to the JPEG photo files. A RAW file contains more information than a JPEG file. You have therefore even more flexibility when editing. However, the RAW files require additional storage space and can only be opened and edited with the appropriate software, such as Adobe Lightroom. In addition, you need at least an interval of 5 seconds and only wide as field view is supported. Since I usually use Lightroom to edit my photos, I use the RAW mode in the time-lapse photo mode. Now let's have a look at the Proteon settings. The Proteon settings are almost identical for the time-lapse video and the time-lapse photo mode. Only the first setting for the bitrate is only available in the time-lapse video mode. If you set the bitrate to high, it means, in simple terms, that more data is transmitted and stored. This can result in better image quality, but the resulting video file will be larger and require more storage space. If you want to achieve the best possible result, you should set the bitrate to high. In many cases, however, you will hardly notice a difference. And if you really want a better image quality, you should use the time-lapse photo mode anyway. The other Proteon settings are, as I said, identical for time-lapse video and time-lapse photo. Under exposure value compensation, you can set whether the camera's automatic should expose the image a little brighter or darker. A negative value leads to a darker image and a positive value to a brighter image. It can often be useful to set a slightly negative value. This prevents very bright areas in the image from burning out. Burned out areas no longer contain details, so you can't save them in post. However, dark areas can be brightened up relatively easily. Therefore, I usually use a value of minus 0.5. Under white balance, you determine how cool or warm your image should look. But why it should always look white and not yellow or blue? Basically, the GoPro Automatic works very well. It will rarely let you down. For very long shots, however, it can happen that the Automatic changes the white balance during the recording for no apparent reason. In the worst case, this could ruin your shot. If you want to avoid this in any case, you should set the white balance manually, for example to 5500 Kelvin on a sunny day. The ISO value determines how sensitively the camera reacts to the incident light. A high value leads to a brighter image, but unfortunately also to annoying image noise. Since your camera in time-lapse mode should usually be on a tripod, you can also set this value to an optimum of 100 ISO. You can therefore set ISO minimum and ISO maximum to 100 for daytime shots. 
Basically, you should not exceed the value of 400. From 800, the image noise can be seen very clearly. Sharpness is an important setting. A sharpness of high leads at first glance to a very sharp and detailed image. But this is also due to the fact that the camera artificially adds digital sharpness. This doesn't always look professional and cinematic, especially if your time-lapse shot should be part of a longer video, I would reduce the sharpness. A setting of low leads to a result that is very soft. You have to add sharpness in post. If you don't want to edit your recording, I would recommend medium. Under color, you can choose between natural, vibrant and flat. While natural leads to more natural colors that correspond to reality, vibrant stands for the typical GoPro look with very saturated colors. A flat color profile gives you more flexibility in post. This is especially interesting when you are using the time-lapse video mode. With time-lapse photo, I usually use the raw mode. In this case, the images contain more information anyway, and a flat color profile is not really necessary. Now let's take a look at the night lapse mode. As already mentioned, this mode is optimized for night shots or low light conditions. The automatic of the camera, as already mentioned, will prefer long exposure times in order to achieve optimal results in low light conditions. You basically have the same settings here as in time lapse mode. Under format, also in night lapse mode, you can choose between photo and video. You have the already explained settings for resolution, lens, interval, scheduled capture, duration, timer and zoom. Under interval, in the night lapse mode, there is additionally an automatic setting that sets the interval automatically. Compared to the time lapse mode, you can then set the exposure time manually under shutter. In this way, you have full control over the exposure and can, for example, determine how much motion blur the lights of passing cars will produce. The darker it is, the longer the exposure time of course should be. The exposure time must also be set in accordance with the interval. An exposure time of 10 seconds requires an interval of at least 15 seconds, etc. Apart from that, the night lapse mode does not differ from the time lapse mode. Now let's have a look at the time warp mode. Basically, this is a sort of time lapse video mode. The decisive difference is that the resulting video is additionally stabilized by the camera. The time warp mode, as already mentioned, is therefore primarily intended for situations in which you move with the camera. Basically, there are only two additional settings to explain. Speed and speed ramp. For all other settings, the same applies as in time-lapse mode. So what does speed stand for? As the name suggests, it's all about how fast your video is speeded up. Just like in time-lapse mode, images are taken at certain intervals. The faster the speed, the fewer images are taken in a certain period of time. The result then looks faster. A setting of 2 will make a video of 30 seconds out of a recording that takes 1 minute. So the video is 2 times shorter than the recording time. A setting of 30 will turn a 1 minute recording into a 2 second video. This accelerates the video by a factor of 30. In addition, the higher the value, the better the stabilization of the video will be. Personally, I got the best results with a value of 10 or 15. There is also an automatic speed setting, which automatically sets the speed depending on the type of movement. I have to say that it works quite well. And there is another interesting feature in the time warp mode. During the recording, you can switch to a normal recording speed by pressing the button in the middle. This means you can switch between time warp and normal video mode during the recording. This way, you can switch to the video mode for interesting moments without interrupting the shot. And with speed ramp, there is another setting for exactly this feature. Here you can set that pressing the button will not start a normal video recording, but a slow motion recording of 50%. That is a recording with half speed. This will emphasize the transition from the time warp recording and the corresponding effect. Unfortunately, speed ramp is not available in 4K but only in 1080 or 2.7K. So let's recap the most important information of this relatively long tutorial. The normal time-lapse mode is for daytime time-lapse shots. The night-lapse mode is optimized for low-light situations. The time-warp mode, on the other hand, is intended for recordings in which you move with the camera, that means for a so-called hyperlapse. In time-lapse and night-lapse mode, you can set the format to video or photo. With the video format, you get a video as a result of your recording. With the photo format, you get a number of photos. You have to merge them with a video editing program if you want to create a time-lapse recording. In addition, the photo format requires much more memory space, but you have more flexibility when editing your images in post. The interval is especially important. The less motion there is in your recording, the longer the interval should be. The longer the interval, the longer your recording will last. In the night lapse mode, you have the possibility to set exposure time manually in addition to the settings of the time lapse mode. This gives you more control over the exposure and possible motion blur. In time warp mode, you cannot set the interval but the speed. The higher the speed, the shorter your video will be and the faster the movement in the video will be. 
a high speed also leads to a better stabilization. With this I would like to say goodbye for today. If the video was useful for you, give me a like as feedback. If you want to support this channel, you can also use the link in the video description to buy me a coffee. See you next time.